prints and class welcome to class three week two lecture regarding breaking down coding cases. What I have to do today is some information that will help you with your weekly assessment for week two. We are focusing on evaluation and management. And um, what I do is just go through some information regarding how you will um, Break down the case and what it is that you need to be looking for. Okay, so what I have here is um, the chapter that's inside of the textbook. We have our 2011 step by step that we're doing, and it's focusing on E&M coding. This is a very distinct to look for when you're coding for evaluation and management. So that's what it is I want to cover today. However, there is another lecture that you should view that I've also recorded that just explains E&M coding in general. You should watch that first and how to actually code for E&M. This particular lecture is only focused on how to ground this week's cases, but it's not going to give you the answers and it's not going to give you the instructions on how to code for E and M. You're going to have to get that by watching the previous lecture that's just covering general E and M coding. So if you have watched that, then I suggest you do so. So go to the chapter. You know that you have your. Um, you're going to see all of this. Your types of services. Um, patient says. Key component. Okay. So today, most of the things that I'm going to be focused on is coding from the key components. Okay, these are important factors in this particular weekly lesson on how to code for E&M services. So throughout the chapter, you're going to have several checkpoints, several exercises that you're going to be working on and in the workbook as well. So I advise you guys to work through your workbook, answer as many as you can, and then compare your answers to what's getting in the back of the book for your um, chapter answers. Um, when you do these particular um, exercises in the chapter, answers are given also later on in the chapter or in the back of the textbook as well. Step-by-step -step textbook and your step-by-step -step workbook. Okay. So without further ado, I want to start on breaking down the coding cases. I have five cases here that I've highlighted. Very important information. I've highlighted things that you need to pay attention to when you're trying to code. This week, since we're dealing with ENM, I'm highlighting things related just to that. In few cases, I will be going over other things related to, like surgery or anesthesia, wherever it is we need to know about. Okay, so all of these are basically um, in a short answer essay format. It's just asking us um, for one or two simple things. So the first one, what I did is just I just highlighted the important factors. There's a lot of information that is not necessary for the actual case so for what you're coding. So we have your observation status for 48 hours is discharged from the hospital. That's an important observation discharge. Then highlighted the question. What is the question asking us to do? Only the E&M code for discharge services. And that's it. We do not have to code the admission. We do not have to code the subsequent observation here. We're only putting for E&M discharge. So when you go through your evaluation and management section and you land on hospital observation services, the first code you get to is observation care discharge services explains to you when to use it and how to use it. 
this is the code that this particular question is asking for. It's not asking you to code for anything else, so just pay attention to that. Moving on to the second case. The patient is four-year-old established. That's important. Patient being in the outpatient clinic. That's important. I'm a pathologist. Okay, so let's highlight or re-highlight what it is that we are on. All right. So we have the type of patient, not new, but she's established. She's been there before. Okay. So that means when we go to the E&M section, when we call for evaluation and management, we only need to look under established patient. We begin there. We're not going to begin under new patient. We're going to begin under established patient. Okay, now we also have to pay attention to that we're coding for office or other outpatient services. That's it. Now we're going to on to match up our key component. It says a detailed history and examination are performed. The examination includes inspection of infection areas, okay, and then there is a long discussion taking place regarding a change in her medication. And then some topical and system treatment was cited on. So it's telling us we have detailed details. And the last thing that's basically missing is the medical decision making, explaining to us whether it was straightforward, low complexity, moderate, or high. So it's that. We can match up two of the three components when we are looking to code for um, E and M services. Two of the three components would be that there was a detailed history and a detailed examination was done. Okay, so that would right there is basically how we would match up and code for these cases. One, established patient. Two, patient clinic. Three, detailed history, detailed examination. That code. Okay? Move on to the next case. I like this first. All right. So we have the age of the patient. We have a lot of information regarding what's going on with number three. But it says here the patient is seen in where initial inpatient consultation. All right. Where initial means see no inpatient hospital patient. Expanded problem focus history examination were performed. Medically making straightforward. These are the only things that we need to know about. All right, so when we get to hospital services, initial hospital care, let's find hospital services, initial hospital care. We can match up the key components. We know that this is not a subsequent visit. We know that she's being admitted or seen for the very first time, but we're going to stay in initial. Also, okay. expanded problem focused, expanded problem focused, and straightforward. Let's see if we can find something that matches that. Uh, let me find. We make that we're not supposed to code it as a consultation. Yes, we're supposed to code it as a consultation. I apologize. We can move on to inpatient consultation so that we can match up our key components correctly. So um, what I did, and my mistake, is what you can learn from, is I, met, I left off that the patient had a consultation and not an admission. 
So moving further down, we began at the code ranges of 99251 through 99255. Then we jump our key components. Expanded problem focus, expanded problem focus, short medical decision making. Okay, so that's our code, and that's all we need to do. Then we move on to the next case. Only done five out of the ten. So I uh, have two more to go over, and then that will be the end of the lecture for today. And so, what I wanted to do is just give you guys some heads up on how to start off and do it yourself, and then the next five you guys will be doing on your own. And of course, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to give me a call or me. On number four, we have the of the patient, but she's being in a local nursing home. So we know the place of service is going to be nursing facility services. Right, so now we have problem focus history and examination and straightforward medical decision making. Now last sentence is diagnosis. Diabetes was diagnosed and treatment started. The endocrinologist contacted the primary care physician and discussed treatment of the patient. Oh, so we do see that the um, provider is basically um, a specialist, so a lot of times he's doing a consultation. However, in a nursing facility, we have a specific consultation code. This patient has already been admitted. She's already been um, admitted initially the first time to the nursing home. So she's basically an established patient. In a patient setting, we do not see, we will not see the term established. We'll see a subsequent visit. So we match up, or we have to match up our key components. Problem focus, problem focus, short medical decision making. So we're not going to do initial, we're going to do subsequent. And we're also going to do it as problem focus, problem focus, straightforward. And that's it. Match up your codes and you're done. Okay, moving down to the last one. I like it. Subsequent follow up care. Okay, she was transferred to a nursing facility for hospital for partial recovery. Now we know it's going to be subsequent care, nursing facility, okay, not a uh, rest home or boarding home or, or, or anything like that. We're still going to be a nursing facility. We have detailed history, detailed examination, and Med decision making of moderate complexity. So we had a I see under subsequent is matched up under detailed, detailed, and MDM of moderate complexity. Well, that's basically it. If you follow these particular rules and these guidelines, um, getting your answers and coding every case, your next five. You guys should be getting 100% on this week's assessment. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate once again to email me or give me a call. And do not try to guess your way through. If you get stuck on a question, please make sure that you give yourself ample time during the week to go over your assignment or your assessment and practice so that when it comes to the weekend, when you actually do sit down to take your test, you're confident that you understand everything it is that you need to um, work on. Okay, have a great week.